a question? Please raise your hand. We'll just get started with Michael, and then we'll go with Scott. Yeah, congrats, and, uh, congrats on the win. Uh, Michael Allen with Pro Soccer here. Um, I'm just, uh, last week you talked a lot about process and the team developing the process. How much does this result mean for that development process, and especially in results going to Sensi and Miami on the road trip coming up? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's critical for confidence, right? Um, you played really well for 45 minutes, and you let the results slip away at home, which is not something we've done regularly. So it, it's painful, it's our home in front of our fans. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are um, really important days to review the game and to look why and to allow the leadership of the team to really you know, dig deep into the dressing room to see why the second half, you know, if you miss a lot of chances in the second half and then they score the goal, it's different, but we soaked up too much pressure against Portland and we're a team that plays our best football with intensity and on the front foot, you see that tonight. Um, so we go through the process Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there's some honest conversations. And you know this has happened regularly because we're not where we want to be. Um, but really constructive. I said in my pre-match, I was proud of the reaction and the response of the team, and it only um, confirmed and solidified that my my ongoing belief that the group is together and that everybody is moving forwards in the right direction within the camp. Um, so it, it gives confidence, it, it, it's payback for good work, it reinforces the process and that is the most important part that on the journey, when you take the knocks, you have to go through the process and you know when you enjoy and you win, you have to go through the process and that's what we'll continue to do going into two difficult road games. Scott, and then we'll go to Michael in the back. Hey coach, thanks for the time. Scott Church and Stream Punk Sports. Uh, the first two matches that you've had, you had a combined total of three shots on goal. These past two, you've had 15. Now, home field advantage notwithstanding on that, what do you attribute that to? Thanks. Uh, I think development. I think we're in, the, in the Charlotte game, we're really pleased with many areas of our, our offensive game, but ultimately the most important and critical area is the, the shots on the goal, the chances created. and. Um, then going into a St. Louis game that we knew wasn't going to look like a Charlotte game, we we you know had moments to create. And we have to improve in that. And um, first half, I was so pleased with the with Portland because we create these chances. And um, for us, it's about improving. So you know, we had a really good 45 minutes the way we wanted to look against Portland. We had a really good 68 minutes today. So you know, we're improving. We go for 90. We get 90 out. Then you know, we make you guys really happy. <laughs> Michael. Coach, uh, Mike Andrew, Nick, uh, Mike Andrew, Blue Cedar Radio. Uh, you, uh, you just talked about absorbing pressure against Portland. Uh, I understand the substitution when Keaton got the red card, but do you feel that you were absorbing too much pressure by bringing on Tavon and uh, Justin Hack Hack in, the in that game? If you ask me for the perfect situation, yes. I, I, don't, I want to be able to take the game to the opposition with 10 players and defend the game with the ball. Um, but you gotta you gotta manage situation and you gotta react to where we are as a group. And ultimately the most important part for this group in this moment was to not concede another goal. So that has to drive your thinking. And I'll go back and review it and I'll do what I always do is that, you know, if I feel like I caused us to have too many defending moments, then I'll learn from it. But I don't think I would change that decision based on I'm completely content with when I put those players in. And we've shown consistently that we can not concede goals. Last year we were strong at it. Um and you know, we missed some chances tonight. We didn't get the second and third goal. And you know, we made a conscious decision to make sure that we were just solid. And I thought Justin Hack coming on and Tavon coming on, you know what you're gonna get from these guys. They are completely committed to the process. So it is the journey. We want to get there where we just are completely experienced and mature in the sense of just keep doing the same things and dominate the game. We're not there yet. You know, I said that team in 2021 wasn't that team in 2021 in 2018 and 2019. Maturity, experience, that oh, that real growth takes time. And we're in that process now, but you know, for this one, we're gonna enjoy it. We're gonna go with John, Maria Isabella, and then Ben. Uh, hey coach, uh, congrats on the win. A uh, little bit of a different question though, not as much about the game. At halftime, it looked like there was a little kind of skirmish as, as everyone was walking off the field. Uh, 
looked like you might have caught a little shove in there at one point. There was, uh, Santi was John, there was a jersey swap between Santi and uh, Insigne at one point. Can you shed a little light on kind of what happened there on the way into the tunnel? Oh, I think I think ultimately in the first half, there was, it, 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 it's tense, isn't it? We lost our first home opener, we went 1-0 down, we then go 1-1, and I thought there was a lot of fouls in the game. I said to the fourth official, mm -hmm. our game is about rhythm, and when we have rhythm and intensity, we make we, we can entertain the fans, we can play football, and you know, there was a foul after a foul after a foul after a foul, and there was a foul just before the half time, and I think, in the end, emotions, because because the game isn't managed in a way that manages the game. And this is not a dig on the referee, I just mean it was so choppy that frustrations are there for everybody, but ultimately it's the game, right? And when the game is that intense, it's gonna be, it's, I mean, there's a red card, I thought there was an elbow, it was, it was a big game of everything. So there was, you know, no issues in the end, we win, so it's uh, you know, it a really important win for us. Hi, coach. First, congratulations on the win. Second, um, most of the fans think that you should be out. What do you think and how do you feel about that? I think ultimately emotion is part of the game, right? And the ups and downs are what drive the emotion. And um, when you lose a game, there is frustration. And when you win, win a game, there is elation. And um, I said last week, when I look in the dressing room and when I um, look in the players' eyes and, you know, you guys have the benefit of coming to the training facility and watching the training. So come to the training facility, you know, come see the, the, the culture that we've got. I'm a big culture guy and I think the culture we've created here in our team is exceptional. Potentially the, one of the best cultures I've experienced at NYCFC, where it's the togetherness and the acceptance and the honesty when we're not good enough and the drive and the hunger to be better and every day working and working. And you know what? We took some punches last season. We didn't win enough games in the first half of the season and we give away late goals and we give away our wins into draws and draws into losses. And for that group to still have the togetherness and the belief and the, the real spirit and passion that it has, I think is very unique. In my opinion, is the one thing that a championship team needs to go through the real rocky parts and take the punches and retain the spirit and the character to stay together. Because when the good times come, they are because of this. When the team is mature, when the tactics are in, when they can control the game because they've been together. You know, I, I had the benefit and the incredible experience of winning MLS Cup with NYCFC in 2021. But I wasn't here in 2018. But by the time I got here in 2020, that group was solid. It was together, it was Maxi Morales, Alex Cayens, Jesus Medina, James Sands, Keaton Parks, Maxime Cheneau, Sean Johnson. The real spirit in the group was there. And it was an incredible team to be part of and coach. This team has that ability, but it takes time to develop that. When you put players together, when you go for Berg Risa and Thiago Martins, and you put Santi Rodriguez, and you bring Hannes Wolf, and then you go Julian Fernandez, and then you go Agostino Haider, who's still, isn't it? And now Jovan Mijatovic. What you have is a potential incredible team. Now, it is our job as coaches and as support staff and as leaders to mold that team into a place where it can be a championship winning team. To think that that can happen overnight like this doesn't happen in the game. We have to stick to the process. We have to work. We have to accept the criticism. We have to enjoy the good times, but develop the bad times. We have to have everything in this group. The spirit, the ability to defend the game, the ability to take the game to the opposition. And you know one of the main things that we need to improve at, at the moment is we need to take our chances. Because our expected goals last week was a lot higher than the outcome. And our expected goals this week, we are a team that has huge potential. And I am completely confident when I look in the eyes of all of the guys and at half time, when I looked in the eyes of all of the guys, that the belief, the togetherness, and the will and the want to not only win for NYCFC, but to win for every member of staff, whether it be the media guys, whether it be the comms guys, whether it be the head coach, whether it be the coaches, everybody wants to win for everybody here. And that's special. That is the New York spirit. And, you know, when we don't get points, I will accept the criticism as the leader. I said last week, I will always front it up. I will always speak to the fans. I will always give my clarity and opinion on why I believe we aren't winning. And the day that I don't believe that I can provide, I promise you, I won't be it. 
Not because I don't want to be here, but because this means more to me than anything. I've been with this organization for 18 seasons, and every team and every person within it is really close to me. Every fan, they are the most important people. So I would never question them. What I will do is continue to work every day, incredibly hard, no matter how I feel, positive or negative, to make sure the team is prepared for the next game. And when the good times come, I won't go and accept them. What I will do is continue to move forward because we have a special opportunity here with New York City. We have great guys that have been recruited well with incredible staff. But what we have is a lot of hard work ahead of us. A lot of hard work to go from a young new team to a really mature winning team. It's the process, I will stay. We stick to the process, we enjoy the journey, and we take the punches when we don't get the good times. But the fans are the most important part of this football club for sure. Ben, right here in the first row. Hi, Coach. Uh, Eric Blum from DailyMail.com. Uh, that goal in the, in the seventh minute, I mean, uh, it must be tough to come back from that, but do you prefer that to happen that early where you guys can just work on it live and come back from it as opposed to something like last week? As the head coach, you never enjoy the goal that goes in. No matter how it goes in, you never enjoy it. But I think, it, I think, we, I think there's an element of, in a, in a crazy way, maybe yes, because I think there's an element of, you're tight, this team is new, right? And it, and it has some younger players, so it, st it starts to be a bit tight. And, it's, and then the goal goes in and you just you become free because you think we've got nothing to lose now. We have to develop that from the first whistle. But, uh, and these wins give you that step of confidence. And you know, it was tough last week to lose the game that we should have won. Um, so did I prefer it? Definitely not. I would love to score the first three goals and then at half time I can sit down and take a coffee. But uh, <laughs> it wasn't to be today, but the strength of character and spirit of the group to just absorb that pressure and that punch and just move forwards is, you know, I said before, I'm proud of the reaction the players showed this week. I'm even more proud of the reaction they showed after going 1-0 down.